I had a very secluded um, childhood. I was born and brought up in Kew Gardens. My parents were both born in 1889, and I was the fourth child, so they were both in their 40s when I was born. And um, it was very kindly but strict family where I was expected to do what my parents told me. I can remember never querying my parents. The idea that I'd become a barrister was extraordinary. Women did not become barristers. My brother, who was 10 years older than me, who was a barrister, was horrified when I wanted to be one. But my father was extraordinarily modern and said, if my brothers could do it, so indeed could I if I was clever enough. I was scared stiff. I had a rather high voice, and I can remember my father giving me excellent advice. Two things. One was to work to lower my voice. Because women, you know, on the whole job, you wouldn't like it if I was up there. <laughs> and uh, the other was to speak more slowly. Because I used to speak, like many young people, extremely fast. I was in very nice chambers. Um, I was made welcome there. Uh, but solicitors didn't want me. And I vividly recall I'd been at the bar for four or five years and there was an undefended divorce in Cambridge, which was of uh, three minutes in court. And so the um, clerk, senior clerk, very sympathetic to me, I'm very lucky. And he said to the solicitor, I happened to be in the clerk's room, oh, I've got Miss Havers here. Uh, she's five years called, and very experienced. Um, I don't really want a woman, said the solicitor at the other end. Well, you know, she's the judge's daughter. Well, can't you find me a man, even if he's only a pupil? And so they sent a pupil to Cambridge. But the clerk said, you know, wait, you, you will make it. And then there was some particularly um, esoteric work in chambers, uh, representing road hauliers and um, owners of big coach companies. And I got into that. And it, it was inquiry work. And oddly enough, although road hauliers was the most conservative group you could imagine, I did actually represent them. And, and it worked. I was not really thinking about the future. I mean, as soon as I married three years after I got to the bar, uh, there I was with a child rather unexpectedly <laughs> early, uh, which was wonderful actually, because I might have waited much too long. And then I had another child two and a half years later and just managing a career, managing a family, was enough for me on a day-to-day -day basis. And then we had our third child five years after that. But what was interesting was my father was getting increasingly worried that I was actually, as he said, neglecting the family <laughs> with my career. And so when I got asked by the um, president of the family division, one of my predecessors, would I become a, a registrar at Somerset House. Uh, I said I'd like to think about it because I was only 36 at the time. And I went to my father and said, what do I do? He said, you must take it. And then he said, you won't get promotion. You won't get any of the things you might want to do, but you absolutely owe it to your family to take this job. It will be an absolutely safe job. You have set hours, you're in one place. And my daughter, when I told her, she was 11 when I became a registrar, and she said, does that mean I know where you are, Mum? <laughs> and I suddenly realised that my father was absolutely right. So of course I took it. The really important leap for me that started my career upwards was to be promoted from Somerset House as a registrar to the High Court. That had never happened before, and it hasn't happened since. And that's what sort of set me on the path. I was uh, in Devon at our house and these little girls were coming along saying, thank you, Mrs. Loss, for letting me have my pony at, at your, in your stables and giving me a box of chocolates. And the phone suddenly went and it was the private secretary of, the permanent secretary of the Lord Chancellor. So the Lord Chancellor wants to speak to you. So I said, oh yes, all right, Annie, I said. <laughs> and, uh, said, yes, okay, and 
then Hailsham said, and, uh, is it you, Elizabeth? Because he happened to know me quite well. So I said, yes. And he said, um, I didn't know your married name. And I said, yes. And he said, I want you to become one of my ju High Court judges. So I nearly said, you must be joking. But um, I said, yes, um, Lord Chancellor. And he said, I, I want you to understand how I appointed you, because there may be some criticism. He said, they came to me and said, that we want to appoint a woman from the uh, Somerset House to be a High Court judge. She's very well supported by the President of the Family Division and other judges. She's Elizabeth Havers. Oh, for goodness sake, he said, can I do it? Because my brother was recently um, Attorney General. And they said, well, it's clear you didn't know who she was. You appointed her without knowing. We think that you can go ahead. And he told me this story because he said, you'll get criticism in the press. And I do want you to know I appointed you on merit and not because I knew who you were. In a sense, I didn't expect to get to the Court of Appeal, but I wasn't all that surprised. Uh, I think it was, you know, um, a reward <laughs> for the report. Uh, and it was a very interesting experience because I think there were 36 members of the Court of Appeal and I was the only woman. I got quite criticised by my female uh, colleagues on the bench who hadn't yet got preferment that I wasn't making more of a point of being the first woman. I took the opposite view that I was there and it was my presence that mattered and it was important that I didn't rock the boat. So they were just got used to me. And every now and again, when they really went too far in meetings, I'd say, come off it, chaps. And they realised that I was there. I retired in 2005 as president of the Family Division and in 2006 I was invited to apply. It was actually Lord Donaldson who filled up the form and sent it to me and said sign it. I had never crossed my mind that I would become a member of the House of Lords. I wouldn't have dreamt of applying. I've never applied for anything. It's always come. And so I did what he said, and so I technically applied. And I was interviewed, and the only question I was asked was, if you get it, will you turn up? And I said, of course I'll turn up. So I do, I turn up nearly every day that the house sits, if I'm free to do so. I concentrate on areas that I know something about, because the great thing about the crossbenchers, of which I'm one independent peer, is they are expert in various fields. And it would be very stupid of me to start talking about something which I really didn't know anything about. So I concentrate on children, I concentrate on legal issues. I have quite a lot of commitment. I felt uh, the higher up the ladder I went with the family cases that I really had a commitment to do the best I could for families. And that included when I was president working with the government of the day to, to improve the family law and to try and persuade the government from not putting in some extremely bad um, suggestions. And I've carried on with adoption and family law uh, since I've been here in the Lords. Uh, so energy, commitment, challenges. If I'm asked to do something, the answer is yes, well, I'd better do it. Mm -hmm.